ladies and gentlemen, this is Trisha from Insectopia, and we are here today with day 29 of Inverttober. That means that we have live streamed every single night for 29 days in a row. Um, that's pretty amazing. I admit I missed, I did miss one day, so it's kind of like really, really close, but that's all right. Um, so we've been celebrating Invertober, we've been doing ink line drawings, we've been spreading moss, we've been doing meet and greets. Monday we are going to be doing a collection tour. Uh, we're going to be doing a collection tour where I'm going to be pulling out all of the drawers in my collection and we're looking at individual unit trays. We're going to talk about all of the specimens and where I collected them and all that type of stuff. We'll share bug stories um, from locations that I've been. It's going to be a great time. So if you're around on Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern, that is our final day of Inverttober and, um, our, and my collection tour. Now, admittedly, I do not have everything spread and pinned that I collected this summer. In fact, I've got a number of vials here that I have some really beautiful specimens in them that I still need to spread and pin. So, um, we are going to, I'm, I'm going to be working on that shortly too. Yahoo! All right, but today we are spreading Death's Head Sphinx Moss. Now, normally we are, our live stream happens at 10, but today um, I was invited to a Halloween party. And instead of saying, no, I can't go to the party because I'll be live streaming, I said, yes, I'll go to the party and I will, um, I'll just live stream a little bit earlier. I'm sorry for those of you who, um, who kind of made this part of your plan. Hopefully you had the little notification bell on, on your YouTube channel so that at least you were notified on your phone that I was going live just a little bit early. And luckily, if you are still around and wanting to watch the video at 10, it's going to be recorded and posted. So you can hang out with us and watch those if you would like. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and get my forceps over here. And so we've got, we've got forceps that don't have any ridges on the inside and they're flat tipped, um, blunt tipped. Um, I have size three pins, uh, boh bohemia insect pins here. I prefer black enameled pins. They're my favorite. So I make sure that the pins that at least I put through insect bodies are black enameled. Now, the, today we are spreading these death heads and we're not putting pins through the, we're not putting pins through the bodies. We are just opening and spreading their wings. So let's get to it. Some of these moths have been in the um, relaxation chamber maybe a little bit longer than I wanted them to be. Um, but they're still beautiful. So there is our, I'll go ahead and turn on a little bit of light down here so you can see all of its colors. The This is the underside of our moth. Um, you can see that there's kind of that line right here in the center. This is, let me get... Um, you can see right here in between there's this dark line that's the separation of the coxy um, or the hip bones essentially of our of our moth here um, so that's where our legs connect and if I was to go here and pull this open this is our proboscis. I was wondering if I could actually unroll, unravel the proboscis, but it doesn't look like it is, um, it's relaxed enough to pull it all the way out. One day I'll go ahead and relax the moth so that we can also pull the proboscis so you can see that. So, um, when I put my moth in our, on our spreading board, we make sure that its legs are all nice and tucked like that. Oh no. I saw that that leg was doing something funny, so I tried to push it back into its body. It broke off. Uh, luckily, um, people don't really look at the legs when they are looking at butterflies, so we can just kind of put it aside. I have not been gluing the legs back on. Um, you can glue the legs back on, but with moths, there's a lot of hair, and when you've got a lot of hair or a lot of CD involved, um, 
then it makes it a little bit more difficult to glue it. All right. So we've got our pair of scissors. Um, this is what the envelope looks like after you open it up. I ripped it a little bit, but that's okay. Um, I like to make sure that when I'm using my glassine envelopes, um, I'm using full um, flat regions um, without these creases because sometimes these kind of edges where they're creased kind of leaves, a, leaves an imprint in the wings it can. So I like to just cut all of these strips off. And then I can use those strips for spreading other insects if I wanted to, or moths that had smaller wings. So now I've got two like this. Now, ha cutting it in half, um, these pieces would still be just a little bit too big. So what I do is I fold it in half, and I actually am going to fold it in half again, and I get quarters, and that is the size that I need for these moths. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this here and here. All right, now I should have four of them, which means that I'll be able to spread, I'll be able to spread two Death's Head Sphinx Moths with one envelope, meaning I get to save half of them, which is kind of great. Um, I like to save as many as possible, um, just because uh, you can reuse them on more specimens, and I would much rather reuse things than have to repurchase them. All righty. So getting our getting our pins in place. Now because we are now because we are not putting a pin through this body, we have to do a couple of things before we even start spreading them off. We need to um, we need to hold the abdomen in place so it doesn't try to spin so that we can keep it straight. We need to make sure we are holding the front also for that same reason so that it doesn't spin. And then a lot of times, even though it's not spinning, it, it can shift up and down. Good morning, chaos! Um, so it can shift up and down. So I'm going to put a... Um, I'm going to put a pin right there up in front of the head. So here we go. Chaos, I hope your day is going smoothly. Do you celebrate Halloween? Oh, by the way, you'll notice that my fingers are a little bit pink. Uh, I was playing with natural dyes today. So I went outside and I made charcoal ink and I made pokeberry ink. Now, the pokeberry paint or the pokeberry ink um, definitely stained me pink, but it was a whole lot of fun to play with. All right, so I've got that cross. I crossed those pins over top of the abdomen. Now I'm going to be taking a pin, and I put it diagonally so that it's going to go forward, but it's also going to hold this body down in the channel. As long as the pin is going through up here, up near the front, so that when you pull the wings to open them, you don't have any issues with running into these pins. So we've got four pins there that are holding the body of my moth. Now I need to take one final pin, pin number five, and put it right here in front of my head. A lot of times I'll try and go between the labial palps. So if you can see, there's kind of those two bumps on the front, and my goal is to put the pin in between them. So then when I lift my wings, that body is not going anywhere. So uh, let's see what our uh, death head looks like. Let's see what the death head hind wings look like. Now they are all this very bright orange color, very much Halloween-esque, but my question is, some of them have different colorations and different designs. Look at that. All right, so I am going to, let's see, this is an issue. I put the pin too, too close to the wing. It was, it was giving me a couple of issues. So 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of paper and I'm going to pin it up there so that I already have one. And now I'm going to pull it back up, get it to where I want it, which is right about there. And now I pin all the way around the moth's wings. Now I'm not putting any pins through the moth's wings. Um, sometimes uh, there are some moths that I will put a pin through the wings. But this, these guys, I have the ability to just make sure that they're straight. Um, oh, there we go. I just have to make sure that they're straight. Now I'm going to, let's see, do the same on the other side. Nope. I just wanted to get this antenna out of the way so that it's not affected by our by our spreading. All right, so same thing. I'm going to put my paper here. I'm going to put a pin in it just so that it, it's staying where it is. I'm going to hold the paper up with one hand, and then I'm going to pull the wing up with the other hand. All right, so I've got it pulled all the way up. I can touch the wing as long as I have this glassine envelope protecting it, right? So I can put as much pressure on this wing as I want, and it's not going to do any damage to the wing because the glassine envelope is um, has a texture that's not going to be rubbing off our rubbing off any scales for our wings. Now, I do luckily have a horizontal bar here, and so let's look. I think it's pretty close. I think the left wing could come down a little bit, but I don't think that it is drastic enough to redo it. I think that that is pretty darn straight. So I am pretty happy with that. You kind of celebrate both. Only old Germans make a big deal out of celebrating Halloween. Tell it, say, technically it's St. Martin's Day today, today too. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so um, I have actually never heard of St. Martin's Day, but I do love to hear about holidays. So what is um, St. Martin's Day and uh, what do you do to celebrate it? So that is my, oop, it dropped a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. What I do is I grab my four, I grab my hind wing with my forceps from underneath. I pinch it and hold up here in the front and I pull it up. And then at the same time, so it's pulled up here. And then at the same time, I'm going to drop this. I'm going to make sure that that corner is where I want it. I put my finger on the end of that wing, I let go of the forcep, and then everything else kind of lines up where it needs to. And now I'm going to go and grab a whole bunch of more pins, and I'm going to put pins all the way around the hind wing too. And now these wings are going to be left here like this for at least five to seven days. These are big moths. Oops. Oh no, it's falling! These are big moths, and so it does take them a little bit of time before they um, before they dry out all the way and they stay where they are placed. Stay where you're put. All right, so what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to start from the end over here so that it stops moving. And make sure that you are pulling that glassine envelope tight because the thing that's actually holding our moth's wings open is that is um, how tight it is on top of the wings. Bonfires and carnivals. 
Oh, that just sounds like so much fun. I love bonfires. I grew up in the country, so we have some pretty awesome fires in the country. Um, and my father still really enjoys um, making big fires. <laughs> um, actually, I think that my parents are, um, are having a bonfire tonight. So that is just in line with what you're saying. So that's pretty cool. I'll have to look up St. Martin's Day. Um, Halloween here has turned into, like, mostly, you know, um, for adults, it's getting dressed up and going out, to par going out to parties and, you know, where everybody is dressed up and having a good time. Um, for kids, it is still going out and um, trick-or-treating or going out and trick-or-treat and getting candy from strangers' houses. Um, but um, trick-or-treating, door-to-door trick-or-treating has been has been on a decline as of late. Um, so many students and um, kids, instead of going trick-or-treating house-to-house, um, they have been more kind of, they call it, like, trunk-or-treating, and they go to, like, trick-or-treat essentially in a parking lot where, uh, people, adults bring, tr uh, they, uh, they put candy in their trunk of their car, and then you trick-or-treat from car to car, or going to just trick-or-treating events, so, like, going to, um, the, like, the library, tr um, Halloween event, or the, uh, or, like, a mall event, and that's gonna be a lot of, by the time it comes around to actual, the, the day of Halloween, so many kids have already gotten so much candy from all the other events that, Sometimes they'll just stay home. All right, I've got my moth wings all spread. We're going to take this cross pin off of the top of the abdomen. You'll see right here I've got that hind leg sticking up, and I don't like when the hind legs stick up. So I'm just going to take it and kind of tuck it like that underneath the body. Um, it'll stay wherever I leave it. So as long as it's tucked underneath there, we are good. Um, now the abdomen of these moths, they're very heavy, very large. So we started with a pin over top to secure it down. But now that we're done with securing it, and it doesn't really need it, that anymore, what it does need is a cross underneath the abdomen so that when it dries, oh, when I picked up the abdomen, that leg popped out again. So when the, um, when the moth dries, oh, come on, little leg, uh, it doesn't fall or sag at all, because I don't want this abdomen to be sagging, so what we'll do, instead of putting it on top, we put it underneath. And it doesn't even have to push the abdomen up, it just has to kind of hold it where it is, because right now the abdomen's pretty straight, but as it dries, it's heavy, and it has a... A tendency to kind of drop a little bit. Um, just like I just pinned a praying mantis and the praying mantis antenna I didn't set in a way they kept wanting to go up so I put cross pins over top of them but then when they dried the antenna actually dropped pretty heavily. Um, so now my antenna fell a little bit and I was trying to figure out if I'm going to pick them up or if I'm just going to leave them there. All right, let's get out death's head number two. So this envelope I don't have to rip up because we already have the pieces from the last one. So all we need is the moth from out of our envelope. Also, don't care if I didn't reply since it's 12.23 a.m. in the morning. I don't know when I will sleep. Oh, well, thank you, Chaos, for hanging out with us today, even though you are, um, what is that? That must be six hours ahead. That's all right. Feel free to go to sleep on us. All right. 
right. And I'm looking at my moth here, and it almost looks like this channel is not large enough, or it might just be the fact that it's not straight. So I'm going to... I'm going to reflame it a little bit with my lighter here. Give me a second. Now it might be a little bit too big, but I'd rather have it a little bit too big than a little bit too small. That's fine. So we've got a little bit more of a channel here um, so that my moss body will fit inside of it. Yay. Oh, actually, that's pretty good fit. All right, cross over top of the abdomen. So after you watch me do this a couple of times, you'll notice that it is a very similar process, right? If I'm pinning the same insect over and over, the process is going to be very similar. Two up in the front to hold the moth down, two over the abdomen to um, secure its abdomen, and then one in the front just to make sure that when I pull the wings up, it doesn't move up with it. I have my two pieces of glassine envelope from last time. Um, it does make it easier to kind of have this envelope pinned here and at the ready, so I'm just going to put it there. Now, um, I am almost ambidextrous. Not perfectly ambidextrous. I don't write evenly and beautifully with both hands, but I have the ability to write with both hands, the, to bat both-handed. Sometimes I bowl with both my left and my right hands. So when I'm doing this, when I have my left wing, I hold the paper with my right hand and I pull the wing up with my left hand. But when I'm doing the right wing, I hold the paper with the left wing and pull with my right wing. Because trying to do it in the other direction is harder for me. So I'm just going ahead and pulling our, our front wing all the way up to where it's going to be creating that 90 degree line with the body. Looks like I my paper isn't tall enough, so I'm going to push it up a little bit. I'm actually going to turn this um, line on. There we go. All right, so now I'm holding our wing in place, and I get to pin all the way around it. Now, there are a couple of places that you definitely need to make sure you put a pin through. Um... Ideally, you want something like one to three pins along the, the leading, the front edge of the wing. Um, you can just put one, mint, but I prefer at least two so that you um, don't have like a hot spot um, where the one pin is. But you definitely want to pin right here underneath the arch of the front of the wing so that if the wing wanted to kind of fall down a little bit, you've got a pin there that's going to stop it. But we don't put any pins along right here because that's where our hind wing is going to be folding up into. All right. And before we do the hind wing, we're going to do the front wing on the right. So I've got my paper with my left hand. I have my forceps in my right. I'm just going to go in here, and you just have to have a mostly steady hand. Um, you grab the wing with your forceps, pull it all the way up. This one is just a little bit tighter, so I might drop it once or twice. Try not to, because every time you drop it, you do lose a handful of the... You do lose some of the um, scales. No! Do you see that? My front wing fell a little bit when I was, my left wing fell a little bit when I was trying to do the right wing. The paper, it was not tight enough. And the body moved a little bit. So we're going to have to redo this. Sorry, guys. Ouch. I tried to put that pin right through my finger. We're going to make 
make sure it's nice and tight this time. All right. And I'm going to hold the body down a little bit stronger with these front pins. I think that that's where our issue really came from, is that the body wasn't being held strong enough as I was pulling these wings. So now I'm going to try one more time. Much better. Now keep in mind our goal is to have a 90 degree line between, so we want our body to be straight up and down, and we want the, the, the hind edge of the front wing to make a straight line across the body. So I'm just going to let this one drop. To about there. And when I'm letting a wing drop like that, what I'll do is I will kind of place my finger where I want it to go. The wing is naturally going to want to fall down anyway or go back as close to the closed position as possible. So if you need the wing to go down a little bit, instead of trying to pull it down, you just let it go a little bit and it'll fall by itself. Um, so if you have your finger tight where you don't want it to go past, that is a good method for getting our wings where we want them. All right, so now we have our front wing all the way across and we need to do our hind wings. Uh, we can very easily just lift this piece up here and that front wing should not move because it should be tight all the way around up there. Now you don't wanna pull on it up because you could loosen it, right? It is possible. So you still have to be pretty gentle with your specimen. When I'm pulling up my hind wings, what I will do is I will hold my I'll hold my paper up here like this. I'm gonna come in and I grab the hind wing um, around the top and the bottom and I push it up this way. Now, once it's to a mostly natural position, maybe something like this, I'm gonna let my paper go. I use my finger to kind of hold where that wing is. And then I'm gonna surround it in pins. So we always want to pin at the beginning of the wing down here so you can keep it nice and tight across um, right here. And then you want at least one pin in between the front and the hind wing so that you can see where it is. Definitely on this one, because I know that these hind wings move a lot, I'm going to do one right underneath that arch here just like you do on the front wing. And then one more for good measure right there perfect next one grab it the same way this wing has a really interesting issue happening right there do you see that guy that is our back leg and our back leg has decided to grab on and hold on to our hind wings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick my wing up instead of going out. And I'm gonna need a no I'm gonna need a pin. Where's a pin? There's a pin. Alright. Uh oh. The floor is danger. I dropped a pin. Alright. I'm gonna take a pin because they're what's easiest to kind of manipulate legs with. And I'm going to go underneath that wing and I'm going to tuck this hind leg down into the channel so that it can't grab that wing anymore. All right. Let's see. I've got my hind wing. I'm going to pick it up and push it forward. Like I said, you want to at the base so that you're holding that paper all the way across. Oh, 
And your goal is also, is not only to make it look natural, but especially on your second hind wing, your goal is also to make it match the other one, right? So whichever angle you left your left, your first one at, you want your second one to match. Um, when you are looking at purchasing, if you're ever looking at purchasing a spread butterfly or a spread moth, to determine the quality of the person who spread the moth or the specimen itself, please go ahead and make sure that you've got that horizontal line across. That's how you tell if it's a good spread job or not. Many, you'll, you'll go and look at specimens that are all wonky and they'll have one higher than the other. What you want is this really beautiful straight line. Now that we have our wings all figured out, I took the, the pins that were holding our abdomen down and I'm putting them underneath so that it holds it straight. Um, also, you can see there's a little bit of wiggle to the abdomen. But once the, um, once the specimen dries, there is going to be no wiggle, no wiggle at all. So this is your one and only time to make sure that the abdomen is straight. Now, I think that mine is pretty straight without the help, but it probably could go over to the left, maybe like that. That's better. All right, and I see this I see this hind leg over here on the right, and I don't like to see the legs of our moths when we spread them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my pin here, and I'm going to kind of grab onto this guy, put it kind of underneath the leg, and then angle the pin in so that that leg sits very close against the abdomen. Now, you don't have to do that. In fact, if you wanted to see the legs, you can even pull them out and make them make it look different. That is up to you when you are spreading your own butterflies and moths. So you get some um, so you get some choices, but having this straight line across, that's not a choice. That's a requirement. You get points off if you don't if you don't make a straight line. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and take these ones that we're going across our body off now. Every now and again with these death heads, doing that might mess up a little bit of the design. So if it does, you can just go back in and kind of flatten out and sort out those hairs and it'll look as good as new again. Uh, you don't want to do that after the specimen dries. So any manipulation you want to do of the specimen, make sure that you do it um, while the specimen is still wet. Or still relaxed. And we've got our antenna. Next one. Let's see how many more I have in my magical box. Uh-oh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are closing in on the end of my death heads that I, that, that I have in my relaxation container. I have a handful more, but they're not relaxed, so they are not ready to be spread. But I do have one more final death head that we can spread and pin together. So I do not have a some glassine envelopes, so I'm going to be cutting this one up. So let's go ahead and pull her out, her out and see what she looks like. So open the bag. All right, so that's what my death head sphinx moth looks like on the dorsal or on the top. If we flip it over, this is what it looks like on the bottom. Personally, I love the underside of death heads. Um, so I think it's best when they're put in a display container that's glass on both sides so that you can see the top and the bottom of the butterfly wings. 
Now, when I am using these envelopes, I just, a lot of times when they're in a relaxation chamber anyway, the glue that kind of seals them starts to go. So it's really easy. You don't even have to, a lot of times it doesn't rip. The last one ripped. They just open up like that. Um, they do have these little kind of flaps over to the side. Those are the ones that when they, um, when they were making them, they fold this over and then they fold it and they glue it together. So these ones that have these solid creases on them, those will mess up your spread job. Keep in mind, we want our paper to be flat and tight against the wing. And when you've got that ridge, it's no longer tight against the wing. And sometimes if you put that ridge going towards the wing, you can actually make an indent in the wing too. So. There we go. Now we've got this guy here. I cut this into four with my desk heads. Now desk heads are really big. So a lot of times you can use these for many, many specimens, but this is only gonna be used for two specimens. One, two, three, four. because I did leave live stream I did leave the live stream early yesterday so that I could go back to the World Series game um, for the uh, the Phillies the Philadelphia baseball team and so I went and I watched the Phillies game last night and we won so that was exciting all right you see how these legs are out and in, in the way uh, what I'm gonna do is I'll show you how what I do. I'll show you what I do when I have pesky legs So a lot of times my pesky legs are Wonky just because they're in the wrong direction, but sometimes when they're wonky like this It's because they dried weird um, And a lot of times after you relax them you can kind of just hand move them into the correct position so you see how the coxie even Right here, those yellow parts, the coxie even moves when I kind of push them in like this. And that's what I want them to look like. I want it to be... I want it to be more like this than way out here. Pull your elbows in! My moth is going, elbow room, elbow room. Got to, got to get you some elbow room. <laughs> All right, so... um. Now that it's moved a little bit, I will do that actually. I kind of work the legs a little bit so that you can see that they're moving even better now. And now when I turn my specimen upside down, I should be able to take a pin and push those legs in and make it fit. There we go. And funny enough, the, the fact that those legs are uh, kind of pushing out is actually going to hold our specimen into the, um, into the channel. So they're actually working in my favor now. They're almost like spring-loaded. It's like, ho! Huh! <laughs> All right, so I am taking a cross um, of the pins going over the top of my abdomen like so. Getting it to fit all the way down into the channel. All right, so we've got that taken care of. Oh, he's kind of uh, closing in on our friend here, pushed forward a little bit. So I'm going to take a pin and make sure that I put it in front of our specimen so it doesn't go forward anymore. And then the one, the, these two that are really important are these ones that hold 
the body from moving forward, especially because when we are pulling our wings up, our specimen really wants to move forward. Alrighty. I have more size three pins. So these are BioQuip, but they're still the black enameled insect pins. And that's what I go for. I really like the black enameled pins. Alright, so we have our death's head here. Keep in mind that we are not putting any pins through the body because they're going on display. They're just going kind of around the body. I have this pre-cut piece of glassine envelope that is the correct size for the front and the hind wings. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to put a pin through it just to make sure that it stays. Um... I hold the paper with my right hand, grab the wing with my left hand, and pull straight up. There we go. Now, our goal is for that hind edge of the front wing to make a 90 degree angle with the body. So, if I take my line here and I look at it, But that's pretty close. So then I can use my fingers and hold this paper because the, this is a glassine envelope and it's not going to be doing any damage to my moth's scales on their wings. So as you may know, moths and butterflies have scales all over their wings and those scales are what give the butterflies and moths their color. So if you've ever touched a moth or if you've touched a butterfly and you see that you've got scales um, and you see that you have scales all or like what it looks like dust, dust all over your hands, that's actually the scales of the butterfly or moth. And if you were to continue to do that, if you touch a butterfly's or a moth's wings over and over again, uh, eventually you can actually rub off all of the scales. And if you do you'll see that butterflies and moths wings they are actually clear so when you look the any color that you see those, those colors are actually on scales and not directly on the wing all right so we've got that left one i always do the front ones first so we're gonna go ahead and get our paper pinned up here for our right wing all right, now I do this with opposite hands just because of the angle at which you have to pull the wing. Because if I try and do it with my left hand, I have to do something like this to kind of pull, and that's just not as comfortable as just attempting to pull with my right hand. Although I am left-handed. So once I have it so that these are going in a straight line from one another, I'm going to pin all the way around our wing. So I always start, I generally start from the top, um, but you don't want to put any veins or any pins in um, in or under the wing because our hind wing will actually tuck up underneath the front wing so we want to make sure that we leave that space open all right so we've got that taken care of i always like to double check with my line to make sure it's about right it's good now we have these beautiful hind wings and they're just sitting back there untouched so we need to fix that we need to open them up so that they can show all of their beauty and glory all right so here we go hold the paper this way i grab when i'm pulling the hind wings i grab from underneath and rather than pull i push the hind wings that's just because the hind wings are super fragile they're much more fragile than the front wing. If you're going to rip a wing, you're going to rip the hind wing. Um, so I always go from the bottom and push rather than pull because that way you are less likely to rip the wing. Uh, 
uh, put a pin right there in between the front and the hind wings. I also want one right here at the base of our wing. Now you'll notice that I have a pesky leg sticking out over here and I don't want that leg there. So I'm gonna have to fix that, but I don't wanna get distracted by that leg because if I just let that go and the wing falls, then we're back to square one and we have to do it all over again. Um, when I've got a leg like this, I'm actually gonna be using, these are what we call jeweler's forceps. Uh, so they're very, very thin. They are actually very sharp. And you have to be really careful not to drop jeweler's forceps. Because if you drop them, you can bend the tips. And once the tips are bent, there's you pretty much can't use them anymore. They're pointless. Um, our hind leg, we want it into this channel. But our, we have one of these pins that's kind of blocking its way. So I have to take this pin out that goes over our abdomen first tuck it down in there. I'm actually going, I see the high, middle leg too. It's right here. Um, so I'm going to see if I can grab this middle leg and tuck it too. Yeah, see that worked. And then I'm going to put this cross pin over just for this hind, just for the right hind wing. All right, lift it up. I'm gonna grab right about here, push on the hind wing until it's even with the one on the left. There we go, that is our Death's Head Sphinx Moth. Now, I don't have any more Death's Head Sphinx Moths, um, and I know that I have been live streaming like an hour and a half, and it had been nice and long and those types of things, but here's our, here's, here's, here's where I'm going with this. I have a party to get ready for, and I am done with my Death's Heads. We did three of them today. I'm actually uh, pretty happy with the way that these guys are going, and I'm going to be putting more Death's Heads into my, my relaxation chamber. We could do, these guys, mm -mm. no, uh, we're going to end it here, that's all right. I know that um, we, I changed the time on everybody, so we don't have as many people hanging out here today, but that is all right, because I will also be live streaming on Sunday and on Monday, um, and then, and then Invertober is over, then we will have live streamed every day of October, and that is an accomplishment all in and, in and of itself, so thank you for supporting me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the closer. So, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you have sincerely enjoyed your time with me today. Um, keep in mind that I teach classes about insects to students of school age. Uh, my students generally start at the age of five. We go five to nine. Uh, five to eight-year-olds or nine to 12-year-olds. Um, if you have a student that's younger than five and wants to hang out and learn about bugs, we... Um, uh, if they, if they think they can follow along with the older kids, I am happy to join them. My uh, ages are flexible. Um, if you have a high school student who really wants to dive into entomology, I would love to, um, set up some high school, high school level classes for them. I just haven't had any interest in high school level classes, so I haven't built them just yet. Um... So come and find me at OutSchool. If you use the link in the description box, you get $20 for free. Um, there is not my logo there, but normally my logo is there, and it's there, over there saying, hey, make sure to, there's, this is it. Oh, I know what happened. I know what happened. I renamed the photo 
that was my logo and that's why it disappeared all right over there make sure you like and subscribe um or make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel and hit that little notification bell that lets you know when i go live especially when i go live randomly or go live a little bit earlier than normal um to allow for a halloween party so thank you so much for being understanding i super appreciate it there is a paypal link so if you are about to go and spread your own butterflies and you learned so much from me or you're about to go and spread some moths and you really enjoyed watching me or you were spreading them spreading or pinning insects with me um feel free to uh send me a couple of dollars i super appreciate it so many of you already do and i hate to continue asking but it's um this is what i do and it is what i love and um it's nice to get um it's nice to have some support to keep my collection going and to keep the um, educational thing of things on, of, of uh, this moving forward. So, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for hanging out with me today. If you are looking for me on social media and you can't find me, that might be because you need to add the 2015 to the end of Insectopia. Please tag me at Insectopia2015 on Facebook or on Instagram if you decide to share knowledge about this class. If you decide to share your picture... Um, um, any of those types of things, if you have old drawings and you're sharing them on Instagram, go ahead and make sure you tag me so that I can see them. All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and I hope to see you all tomorrow. Stay buggy.